Grenfell has highlighted, and it's sad to say that it's had to come to that, just how bad Harvey Casey have been for many, many decades. And 72 people lost their lives because of that. The tower is the centre of the estate. You can't avoid it. We have to look at that tower every day. We're reminded every day. We have to live it every day. Before the fire, residents spoke out and they weren't listened to. After the fire, it's pretty much the same. The council doesn't seem to want to listen if it doesn't fit with what they want to hear. Residents that are living here know what they want. The council doesn't speak to the residents to find out what residents want. Three and a half years later, their culture there has not changed at all. I'm Jill Brown. I'm the current chairperson of the Henry Dickens Court Estate. I moved in 1976. I was also a previous chair through the 1980s right through to 1999. So my history goes way, way back in community voluntary work, unpaid, and it actually stems from my father. My father was in the, the Navy in World War II on the um, destroyer called the HMS Matchless. They were destroying a German battleship in the Antarctic. There were survivors on that ship, and the HMS Matchless put on their lights and their ladders to try and rescue the sailors in the Antarctic waters. The commanders then told everyone the lights had to go off, the ladders had to be drawn up, and they were not going to be rescuing any others. There is a transcript which matched my father's words. Only 36 out of 2,000 men were saved that night. We could still hear voices calling from the black of that Arctic winter night, calling for help. And we were leaving those men to certain death within minutes. And I grieved for those men every day of my life. And there was one sentence he said to me, Jill, whatever you do in your lifetime, never leave anybody behind. Those that have power, have lost, lost that completely because they are leaving people behind. I'm Stuart Hall. I live directly opposite the tower. I was out there from about half one that night. New people that sadly didn't make it out of the tower, new people that actually did make it out of the tower. We've all been affected by it in our own way. The fight was terrible. It was like, uh, it was like the blitz. None of RBKC was there. It was just the community helping each other. Residents held residents together, you know. We supported each other through, even till now. Residents are supporting each other. On that night, because I'm part of the Latimer Community Church, I got a telephone call at quarter past one. So I was actually out there then. I've never seen anything as devastating and as heart-wrenching as what I saw then. My name is Tarek Gotti. I live at Henry Dickens Estate. I've moved here from the States back in 2006. I'm volunteering. I'm doing COVID now and I'm also, I've been doing Grenfell before. The night of the fire when I got there, I froze because memories came of 9-11. I lost 26 family members. So that night was a bad memory. My name is Vasiliki. I live in the area for about 38 years. Our building is about 80 meters from the tower. What we have seen with the children screaming and suddenly you don't hear their voice. The people, we saw their faces at the windows. You know, all these things, you know, came up again and again like a, a nightmare for weeks and weeks and weeks. We as residents, we had to stand by and watch and it was so helpless. I avoid looking out my window. I avoid using a certain entrance to get into my block. We've had a lot of pollution. We don't yet know how bad the toxins are from the cladding, because all that stuff went into the air, all that stuff still floating around. Coughing, 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 inside my throat, it was like scratching me. Everybody was complaining about similar things, and there was absolutely nobody to address our physical or uh, psychological problems. The working class gets zero hours and a place to live in Grenfell Towers. The search for justice gets a light. He had everybody living in the tower. 
from all walks of life, from so many different countries. Race and background should have been a part of the inquiry because that's what mattered. I think the inquiry is a joke. We're three and a half years in and not one arrest. Not one, one person accountable for those deaths. The company that supplied the cladding, they should go to jail. The council themselves took the decision to go for a cheaper version of cladding. I want to know how that decision came about. Who was consulted on that to make that decision? Oh, well, we're not going to go for that cladding because it's too expensive. We're going to save money because they were a rich borough. They had millions in their reserves. They could have afforded the proper cladding. Anything to save a buck with RBKC anything to stop spending money on this side of the borough. Why are we always the last to get anything? Why? We've been having a problem with this property for years and it hasn't changed, it's just got worse. We're private um, landlords, yeah? London and Quadrant. But they put us here 17 years ago because they didn't have nowhere for us to live. They don't really cater for disabled people. I had polio when I was seven years old, which affects my back spine and my legs. Permanent disabled and wheelchair user. Look at these kitchens. And this is what they call it, disabled adaptive kitchen. What do I have to do to get stuff out like this? Yeah, and this is serious of help. Which, that's what I have to do all the time. Everything is broken anyway. No window, no working fans, and there's all the mould here, yeah? That's coming off the well as well. And these have got mould all over them as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's broken as well, because they did it fixed to the wall. Water's leaking in there as well, and the water's been going through the floors, all damaged, and also the walls. We are four family with two children and two adults. The kids' bedroom, I'm going to show you. The rooms that they said is enough for two children. One of my child, basically he's asthmatic, the little one. We've got moles everywhere here underneath. In here, I've got two big batteries. That's my main wheelchairs that I take outdoors well. It takes five hours to charge one of them. I should put my wheelchairs between them and then transfer safety. But in this case, I haven't got a space that where I can actually transfer, do that. Kensington and Chelsea, one of the richest borough, this is how they treat disabled people. The community ain't had it, so where is it? I can find no records of where this money has gone, or where it, or who spent it, on what it's been spent on. We need RBKC to open their books. Every penny they spend should be up for scrutiny. And if they can't tell us that and they can't show us the receipts, the police should have to be informed, because that is taxpayers' money. So again, I ask, where's the money? Where's the £50 million that's been put aside to help these people? You're not empowering anybody to move forward. You're not empowering anybody to actually change. You're not empowering the younger generation. Is the money you made worth the lives